Um, so Cameron, why don't we just get started and why don't you go ahead and uh, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Cool. It's not fair though because you have like notes and stuff. Yeah, I mean so, this is the history uh, of out, like, since bio, elementary I school. I bio myself to read off up here. So I'm Cameron. <laughs> I am the VP of Search and Social at CBS Interactive. Um, I live down in San Diego by way of Canada, proud Canadian. Um, before CBS, I was at a startup called Clicker, and um, CBS bought us um, just about a little over two years ago. Um, and before that, I just did a bunch of different um, stuff on the internet. I've owned a lead generation company. Um, I've done a lot of consulting for SEO and social media for um, anything from venture started um, or venture backed startups to um, Fortune 50 companies. So I've been doing this for about 13 years now, which that seems like such a long time to say, but yeah, so early 2000. And you are also a surfer. Yes, I like to surf. I like to ski, <laughs> um, other stuff. And as well. travel yes. and everything. He's not just an SEO guy. Um, every, everybody here, who's actively right now doing SEO for their startups or their companies to grow? Raise your hands. And who's not? Raise your hands if you're not then. All right, good, just checking. Wow. And do, do you all know what SEO is? Why don't you go, what is SEO exactly? So, so it stands for search engine optimization. And that is basically just increasing your organic rank on the different search engines. Um, it, I guess it's as simple as that. It's obviously like everything behind that is a, little, a lot more complex, but but yeah, that's what it is. And, and like what success would you like, are you guys thinking about doing SEO or like you, and that's why you're here, you want to get involved? Raise your hands if you're thinking about doing SEO, those of you that haven't yet. All right, cool. So like what's the scariest thing for you about doing SEO? Just pretty new, pretty new to the business. Uh, the guy I'm working with has really high quality digital video ad space. Um, I bought a book, SEO for Dummies, and read that. Say it proud. I don't know a lot about it, but it's definitely an angle to hit, and but just a lot of stuff going on. You know, new company, new totally. business. And, um, so, just, yeah, I just don't know a lot about it. Totally. How about you, Brian? What, um, what about SEO? Total newbie. <laughs> so he mentioned reading a book. Like the one thing I want to say about SEO is just be be really careful about what you read because there's a lot of people out there, like in the blogosphere and the Twitter sphere and whatever whatever else that are like talking about different strategies or telling you to do things. And there's a lot of people that r really haven't done much for it, and they um, it's it's easy for them to talk about it, but not actually have like anything to back up the proof that they know what they're talking about. And so. Like, just be careful about what you're, you're reading about it out there. And the best way, really, to learn is just get your hands dirty and start doing it yourself. Um, you know, start, you, you can read it and just, you know, what makes sense to you, what doesn't make sense to you, start trying those different things. And that's really the best way to learn is just, you know, trial and error, getting your hands dirty, doing it on your own. And what we're going to be talking about later is some resources that you recommend and how to do that. But let's sure. start out. When, when did you start out in search and social? You said 13 years ago. Yeah, so social, social wasn't around there. So I got started in SEO in you know, somewhere around 2000. It was the early 2000s. Um, you know, I was, had been out of high school for a couple of years. I tried college. College wasn't really my thing. And I was kind of struggling with what I wanted to do with my life. I needed to figure out something to do. And so I started to come up with ideas for like, different websites that I could build. And so I went down to Barnes and Noble, bought some books on HTML, how to build a website, that type of thing. And I was really naive at that time. I, I just figured if I was able to put up a website with a few pages and a few pictures, I would just have instantly tons of people coming to it and I would make a ton of money and I would be sitting on a beach somewhere, you know, getting drunk and spending my, day, my days doing that. But, <laughs> <laughs> woo. So quickly after like learning how to build a website, I learned that that wasn't the truth, that people weren't just gonna find it and come to it automatically. And so from there, I started to like research the different ways to get people to come to your site. And I came across SEO and just started trying a couple of the things that, that I had seen and, and heard people talking about and it started to work. And so that to me, I guess just kind of... What was your very first place where like your first encounter when you said you started listening to people and talking to people? Um, 
it, it's, it's hard to say where my first encounter was. It, I mean, it must have just been different message boards and stuff back then. Um, you know, there was a site called Threadwatch. Um, it's, it's no longer in existence. I don't really remember exactly what the other ones were called, but there's just, you know, it's the Google machine. That's your, that's your best friend, you know? Anything that you type in there that you want to learn, you're going to come across stuff. So how to, you know, anything to do with SEO, how to write a good title tag, how to do a 301 redirect with HT Access Apache, you know, whatever it is, like whatever you want to type into the Google machine, like you're going to find like answers for anything. And so that's kind of, what I resorted to, and I just, you know, like I said, I started coming across different things, and the stuff that I tried, some of it worked, some didn't, and I just kept doing the stuff that worked, and I don't know, I just saw, there was a light bulb went off, and I just kind of saw, like, wow, this is, you know, the search stuff is going to be pretty important. So. And what do you love about it? What do I love about it? Um, I guess I, I like the risk about it a lot, because SEO is a big risk, because you put a lot of time and energy up front, and you don't necessarily see the immediate payoff like you do with like search engine marketing where you can just, you know, put in a couple hundred bucks into AdWords and in five minutes you're going to be getting traffic to your site. So I kind of like the risk part of it where you put in like a lot of work and stuff and you don't really see it pay off until the, down the road and then once you see that people start coming to your site, it's just, I don't know, it's like the best feeling ever, Secret you know, site. you're like, yes, this works. And awesome. I, want, I want to get into what we just discussed a few minutes ago about resources, and most of you know me that I am a thousand percent committed to your success in being here. So I want you to walk away with actionable tips that really make an impact on your life. And if you, for some reason, don't feel comfortable sharing your question, or you didn't get your question answered, email me. I encourage it because I really want this chat to make a difference. So what resources would you recommend to someone starting out? What books, what websites, SEO book, or... Um, so yeah, SEO book is a really good one. SEObook.com, yeah, right? Yeah, so SEObook.com. It's run by a guy named Aaron Wall. He's been in the industry forever. He, he's a smart guy. He knows what he's talking about. I would, you know, would, I wouldn't go off everything the guy says because some of it's either going to be advanced and it could be misinterpreted or, you know, whatever else. But he knows what he's talking about. Um, Search Engine Land, it's run by Danny Sullivan. Danny is pretty much the one that started SEO. Um, and from there, I, I would say there's only really another two or three guys that, you know, I don't necessarily want to say because I don't want to, like, leave out, like, certain friends and stuff. But, yeah. you know, there's only a, f a few people that I recommend to other people. But those are, that's a good start. SEO book, Search Engine Land, um, great resources. And how many, how much time do you think people will need to spend if they go to those two resources every day in order to really become, you know, better than, you know, at least intermediate? Um, so I'm going to say it depends, and I'm going to probably answer a lot of the, the questions that way, but I guess it really depends on, A, what you're trying to do, and B, like, what your site is trying to do, and what is the, the proper user acquisition model for that. And so there's a lot of sites that are heavily dependent on SEO, where you might get 40, 50, 60, even 70. Like, I've seen as much as 90% of traffic on sites that come from SEO. So obviously, like, something like that, you want to be investing that much time, 50 to 90 percent of your time, like learning SEO. There's, but at the same time, there's a lot of different sites where, you know, SEO makes up a very small number of that. And so, for for things like that, like you may not want to invest as much time. Or, but how do you know? Um, like, that, that, I, I mean, let's backtrack for a second. What's the difference between search and social? So the difference between search and social is search, like that. That's traffic coming from search engines. So. The major one is obviously Google. That's going to be 90% of your SEO traffic. And then the other 10% is 9% of that is Yahoo and Bing. And then, you know, there's a handful of people that make up that other 1%, AOL, um, you know, whoever else. So, um, And then uh, social, that's social media traffic. So that's going to be things like Facebook, um, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, um, things like that. And they're actually... Um, like the strategies behind them and the mechanics behind them and the way they work are actually um, drastically different. So I know, and that's what's so scary because I mean, let's say I'm a startup just starting out, and you know, I go to a conference and I hear I should be on Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and all this stuff, and it's like, ah, how do I be on right. all these things? And then I come here and I hear I should be doing, you know, search and going to search engine land, and it's like, where do I spend my time? It's overwhelming. Um, so, I, I don't know, like a lot of it, when you ask the question of like, how do you know, um, for me it's, at this point it's like a lot, a lot of it, I can just shoot from the hip and I know, but that's not a good answer for you guys, so 
Um, I would say look at like the competitive landscape, um, see what people that are either like direct competitors or people with similar models to you, like what, they're, what they've been successful with as far as like user acquisition. So a site like Facebook, like Facebook, they probably don't give a rat's ass about SEO, right? A, a site like Pinterest, like they probably don't get much SEO traffic and they probably don't care about that. They're more into the, to the social stuff where they get pe people like doing the social hooks where because they're sharing a thing and it's emailing their right. friend that they talked about them on their Facebook page and you know inviting their friends to, to sign up and follow their Instagram or whatever it is. Like, so they're completely different models. Do you think sometimes when I give a talk on um, social media and people say, you know, which one should I do? And they're talking about YouTube and Twitter and all this. I, I generally say, like, do the one that feels most in alignment with what you're passionate about. Do you think that's the same thing with uh, deciding whether to do SEO? Like, do you enjoy it? I do enjoy SEO. No, I, you do. I, yeah, but, like, yeah, I love it a lot. Themselves. Like, um, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I don't. If you're running a business, I don't necessarily look at it like, what am I going to enjoy doing it? I look at it like, what's going to make me successful? So where where is my target audience? Are they hanging out on Facebook? Are they hanging out on YouTube? Are they on Pinterest? Are they on some super niche mom and pop site? Or am I going to get them through SEO? It's you, you know you got to be able to like ask yourself that question and then figure out how to like find the answer to that. And do you have any suggestions like on how to find the answer, maybe some first steps? Looking at like the competitive the landscape or just having a good understanding of your model and like what the user acquisition model is behind that. And, and where we your target a, audience is. We have a lives. question over there. How do you figure out what the competitive user acquisition model is? Where's the analysis of that? So a lot of it can be like public, but a, a lot of it is, I mean, there's like third party tools like compete.com or Quantcast or things like that that can give you com like some insights to that. Let's do that real compete.com right. and Quantcast, which is Q U A N T C A S T. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> there's alexa.com. Um, I wanted everybody there's some to be SEO able to write specific it down. ones. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to give out some more. So there's SEM Rush. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there's I I mean if you start looking around there's a you know, a handful of those tools that can give you some, some insight into, you know, how people are, are coming across sites. And then you can just like, I don't know, just study, study like your competitive landscape and just like get an understanding of it that way. Like, I mean, some of it's pretty obvious that it's not like an SEO acquisition model because you can just look at like how the site is set up and stuff. Like, for example, like content heavy sites, like those tend to be like heavily driven by SEO, whereas user like user generated content and stuff like that tends to be more heavily um, populated by like social media marketing and things like that. Did that answer your question? Perfect. And have you ever been a startup entrepreneur yourself? Yeah, definitely. Um, I still consider myself an entrepreneur. Like even though that I, I work for CBS, I still have some of my own sites on the side. Um, I got started in this by building my own sites. I've done my, my own sites, you know, the whole entire time. So I definitely consider myself an entrepreneur. Um, even the way that I've set up my arrangement with CBS is, is a little bit entrepreneurial. Like I work from my house in, in San Diego and most, most of my team is remote as well. A lot of my team works from their houses, you know, throughout the country. You know, we have a handful of people that do work in the office and stuff because that's important. But so yeah, I definitely consider myself entrepreneurial for that's sure. My, like I, I was born an en entrepreneur. So. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Yeah, working for a huge network, I mean, do you feel like that you still own your own soul? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he, defi he definitely owns his soul. <laughs> no, I, I question, I question. <laughs> I ask myself that question often, for sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, so where, where is this going in the next year, three years, five years? Where, where, where do you see this stuff going? Um, so I, I feel like I still have a lot to prove at, at CBS, um, to prove to myself, really, more than anything. Um, like I'm really, right now I'm playing at the highest level that possible on the internet. Like CBS, we do 300 million unique users a month across all our properties. We're a top 10 um, internet property, global internet property measured by Comscore. So for me right now, it's, it's about proving to myself that I can play at this level and I can win. And so I don't, I don't know where it goes from there once, uh, uh, it, you know, God willing, I'm successful at that. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've got a, a really good arrangement at CBS. Uh, I really like the company. I like working for them. Um, I like the people I work with. 
Um, I like the properties that we work with, but at the same time, um, you know, in the back of my head, I still have that, you know, um, independent spirit that's still calling out to me. And but, but as far as the technology goes, though, what do you see? I mean, you know, what's the next evolution? Or what, I mean, do you have any kind of vision of what, what's going to happen next with, with, with the technology? Um, so, like, the technology of our, our website. Well, let's talk about some things you're doing at CBS Interactive. Um, should we try and answer this question first? <laughs> you can't. Yeah, I mean, I was just, just high level. I mean, you know, I mean, Greg Kurzweil is this genius guy that says we're going to be, you know, uh, singularity is going to happen in 2023 where machines are going to over. So I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking big picture. <laughs> yeah, no, so I'm just. We're, we're, you know, I'm just question. trying to cater to the masses. <laughs> yeah, so Sorry, it's free. It's okay. I still love you. <laughs> um, to, to be honest, I, I don't. I don't really know. Like, I, I mean, a lot of the stuff still takes me by surprise. Like, you know, how long has mobile been around, or how long has it really been taking off now? Maybe like five, six years. I mean, when it was first getting started, like I never envisioned it to become what it is now. And just like looking at the tra trajectory that it's still going, it's. Like I think that, I think there's still a lot of room to go there in mobile. I still think that we're early, early in that phase. I still think we're early in the internet phase. So I still think there's a lot to go as, as far as like, like the whole machines taking over and stuff. Like, I mean, I, I got to think eventually they are going to. Like technology is just the rate it's going. It's it's unbelievable. But I mean, I I don't know to be honest. So. Do I have your permission to reel it back in now? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm really curious to know. How is it different doing search and social for a large corporation versus a startup? Um, so the best analogy I think I can come up with is a startup is like driving a speedboat and working at a company like CBS is like driving an oil tanker. Like everything just takes a really, really long time to, to get done, whereas a startup you can get stuff done like instantly. Like when we were at Clicker and I would come up with like recommendations and like development lists and things like that, the stuff would happen so quickly and now it's just a, a much slower process and so I guess that's like the thing that I would say is like the biggest difference is just like the speed of which the, the two move, you know? And like to give CBS credit, like as much as a big company can be run like a startup, like CBS is, but it's, I mean, it's still not the same comparison apples to oranges. So. But are there different tactics? You, I imagine there are. There's, there's a lot of different tactics you use for a large corporation versus when you're doing something with 20,000 hits a month or something like that. Um, yeah, so there's, there's definitely different tactics. Um, you know, some I should of say 20,000 site visitors. Some, some of the tactics are the same. They're just at scale. Um, but, but there are some that are different. Like, let's take like link building, for example. So link building. Um, it, it's something that's very, very important for SEO. Um, you know, so just to give you a little, little background on that, the way that, that Google typically, um, t typically, how would I say, like, I guess, like, judges a site's authority is based on the number of votes, which are links that are pointed to your site. And so that can be both by, like, the authority of the link that's pointed to it, as well as the number. And so with link building, um, at a startup where you're starting from, you know, a handful of links or very small links, it's a, a process where you're going to be much more involved in and like actively link building. Where in comparison, like one of our sites, CNET.com, CNET.com has a hundred million backlinks probably at least. Like I could never go out there and do link building and make any sort of like move that needle, needle at all. Like I, I could never could. So we got to think of instead of like link building the traditional way, how can we like just get more of our users to link to us naturally? Or how can we put more social hooks into our pages and our content and have that stuff happen naturally? Um, so I, I guess it's a lot of things like that. Like it's really just a, a different scale. A lot of the tactics do say the same, but. And, and what are some of the things you're doing at CBS Interactive? <laughs> Um, what are some of the things I'm doing? That's kind of a loaded question. So we're doing a lot of things. Um, what I do specifically, so I run the search and social group. So I oversee like the strategy for all of that. Um, but to, to be a little bit more specific and answer like your question, some of the things that we're doing. Um, one of our major projects right now is we're re-platforming the technology of all of our sites. So one of the, the things that's been the biggest struggle for us and that I've um, worked pretty much nonstop since I've been there for the two years now, 
is just like undoing like problem on top of problem on top of problem that have built up over like 10, 15, 20 years that these sites have been around that instead of people like rebuilding these sites from scratch or like really like getting down to it and fixing it, they've just kind of like built the problem on top of another one and so it's taken us forever to like try and untangle all that. And we finally just got to the point where we're like, in, instead of doing this, it's either a lot of the stuff is going to be impossible or it's going to take too long. We're just going to start from scratch and re-platform every single one of our sites onto, you know, new technology that we're building from scratch. And so that's like a huge project for now, for, for us right now. I'd and, say so. <laughs> yeah. And th that's been really cool, though, because, like, for me as an SEO and my SEO team, we've been able to get in at ground zero and kind of, like, build a lot of the things that we could only dream of that we could be able to do with these sites that we're now able to like make a reality and kind of get this stuff built into this new technology right from the start and so that's that's pretty cool that's something i'm, I'm pretty excited about that's so awesome. i love I, I particularly love how passionate you are about your job and how you went from a classic startup entrepreneur yeah. to an employee of a corporation but bring that entrepreneurial spirit with you um, what are some of the basic things, like you were talking about link building, so what are the basic things in search and social that everyone in this room should already have done if they have a website? Um, so let's tackle SEO first. So some of the, the basic things that you should have, have done first is you should have a, a, a clean, simple architecture of your site, followed by um, short, clean URLs that make sense. Um, from there, you probably want to go to the on-page stuff. Um, and that's things like um, title tags, um, meta description tags, header tags, um, just really like all the on-page stuff that affects SEO. And can, can you get into a little bit more, like some people may not know what meta tags and title tags are and they may not know what even like clean architecture means. So, uh, so the way I would describe like a clean architecture is just um, like the information information architecture of your site that makes um, that makes sense uh, makes simple sense from both a usability and um, thinking from a search engine spider's standpoint. So um, properly categorizing and tagging your content, um, building proper hierarchies of that, um, you know things like that from the top down. One so. question that comes up a lot is, what's the difference between categories and tags, and which one is more important? It's just a it's just a different way of labeling the two. Um, really, I mean, like one of the things that we've kind of gone back and forth with a lot at at CBS with like some of the engineering teams is whether we call things like tags or topics. And to us, it's just like, you know what? It r really doesn't make a difference. It's just the way we're labeling it, whether it's a, a topic or a tag, and it. It doesn't make that much difference. So that's really all, all it usually comes down to. Um, you know, generally, like if you're just thinking of something simple like a, a WordPress site, like categories tend to be like the very few top level stuff, um, whereas the tags, you can have those a lot more granular and tag like each of your piece of content based on like tons of different subjects. So even though it may go into like a laptop computer category, you could still tag it Apple, Apple MacBook, Apple MacBook Air like all those different things. And so it's just like getting a lot more granular type, type of thing. Does that make sense to everybody? Every What he said about meta tagging, everything. Does anybody have a question? Yeah, yeah I do. I'm curious, why is, I mean, are there meta, um, automation tools or is there any software that's being developed to streamline that? So yeah, there is a lot of automated tools out there. There's a lot of SEO specific tools. Um, so, some of them are really good. Um, but a lot of this stuff can be, um, mostly automated on the development side of things. So let's take like title tags for example, like if you have like a certain page type on your website, like you can pretty much like d develop a format that's gonna carry across all those different, pa almost the exact same thing across all those different page types, just replace like keyword from the page into like a, a certain bucket there, so. Does that, make, does that answer your question? Great, um, and what are some of the top mistakes newbies make? Which is none of us in this room. Jeez, that's a, a really good question. Some top top mistakes that, that newbies make. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if I can nail it down to one thing. I would say, Link wheels, like if, if I had to say something that I, I see like newbies making mistakes at is not, is 
not doing, not actually doing enough stuff. So they're spending too much time researching it, or like, I guess, debating like things or whatever. Like instead of actually just doing stuff, like that's that's a big mistake I see that a lot of people make. Is I say just do it and. I mean, you're going to find out fairly quickly whether or not it's working, and that's really the best way to learn is by trial and error. So, you know, you probably make a lot of mistakes along the way, but if you're doing stuff, at least you're learning what, what's working and what, what doesn't, and you're, you're continually moving towards your goal, you know? But the scary so. thing about SEO is if you do the wrong thing, Google could blacklist you. Yeah, so... So how do you stay away from those types of mistakes? Um, so one... Th one easy way to do it is to look at, like Google has some guidelines on their website, so that's one easy way to make sure that you're not like doing the, the things that could get you banned, is just to read their, you know, they've got one page on there, it's got a bunch of different guidelines, they, you know, they lay out things that are pretty specific. If you, you know, engage in these type of activities or these type of tactics, you know, we, we will and can, can ban you for that, and so really that's the best way to, to, to know whether you're going to be complying with the them or almighty not. Google, the almighty Google. Um, and would you recommend that everyone here a, hire someone to do SEO or learn how to do it themselves? Ooh, that's going to be another one where I'm going to say it depends. Um, I okay. think that there, there's a lot of cases where some of your startups or some of the sites that you're working on probably require somebody full time, at least one person full time to, to be competitive in your space. And there's other people that can like grasp the concepts and stuff very fairly easily, and they can be, you know, they can kind of do both on their themselves. You know, maybe they're developing like a, a new website on their own, but they learn like I guess kind of like how to build a search engine friendly site and different things like that, and so that they can just kind of just incorporate that along with their other work as well. So how would you? It's call really one of those things yeah. that depends. It's hard. It's hard to say. Everybody here is probably doing different stuff. I so. totally get it. it. I mean, how would you, because in the beginning you said be careful because there's a lot of shady information out there. So how do you qualify someone's legit when they're going after the job? <laughs> um, so th th that, that's why I say be careful because it's very hard to, to qualify whether somebody is legit or not, especially for somebody that doesn't know, you know, like you can read Joe Schmo's blog and think whatever he's writing about sounds intelligent, but he, he could be way off base. So. I would say just to start off with, to, to just stick with the basics, um, you know, and go from there and then kind of, you know, like I said, you're just going to, you know, if, as you start doing the stuff, you're going to know what works and you're going to know what doesn't work. Um, the other thing is just to stick with like a few of the authority individuals in the industry and just kind of, you know, if they're not talking about it or, you know, they've kind of contradicted what the, the other stuff is, then, you know, maybe you stay away from that from now until you're able to, like, kind of figure it out on your own. One question when hiring a developer that I've been taught, because I'm not a programmer, so it's always to see if a dev developer looks what my project is and then what the best coding language is to match my project, rather than saying my project should be built in X. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like a warning sign if they say my project, uh, I, you know, I build in PHP, therefore what you're working on should be done in PHP. Is there anything like that with SEO or search where like a question that they ask that's just totally off base? <laughs> it's hard to think off the top of my head like a specific question that they ask that would kind of like throw a red flag or alert you that they're way off base. Um, like I, I, I definitely get what you're saying about like the programming part of thing because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost kind of a, like a word I guess, a, a, almost like a religious type thing, right? Yeah. So, like, I think cr Christian is the right religion, and you think Catholic, yeah. you know, like that, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of the same way with programming. It's, so a SEO is, is not quite that black and white. Um, yeah, totally. It's a shame. It, it can be, yeah. but it's generally not, so. Totally. Yeah, I wish there was, like, Yelp reviews for, like, <laughs> SEO practitioners. I, I'm, sh I'm sure there is. I'm sure somebody... There's got to be a vetting site I'm sure site somebody out has there. got something like that. Like maybe SEO Moz or somebody, they might have a, a directory totally. of, you know, like SEO, SEO agencies or SEO consultants and things like that totally. that have been rated. I, I don't know. That's SEO MOZ. And hiring someone, I know this is kind of an it depends yes. answer definitely as well. But let's say, you know, kind of on average, not a you, mm -hmm. but someone that knows what they're doing, uh, at least on a on a basic level. How much would that cost to hire that person to grow? 
with your um, company? So how much would it, 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 I hate to answer it depends, but again, it does. It depends on A, like what specifically you want this person to be working on. Is this somebody that's gonna be just SEO? Or is this somebody that's gonna be like complete audience development where they're gonna do SEO, they're gonna do social media, they're gonna do you know, email marketing, they're gonna do paid search, so on and so forth. Or is it somebody that you're just looking for just SEO? Um, so just like SEO specific, like it's, it's a broad range, like it starts anywhere from 50,000 and I mean there's pretty much no ceiling on it. From and there, would you so. shy away from hiring an intern for SEO? I would shy away from it if I didn't know what I was doing myself. So me personally, I wouldn't shy away from it because I would be able to to give that person proper instruction and guidance as well as be able to know what they're recommending, whether it's it's right or wrong before it, it gets you know passed on to you know the engineers or whoever else to to be implemented. Um, if if you don't know what you're doing, if you have no experience with SEO, if it's something that you don't understand very well, then I would probably shy away from, from hiring, you know, somebody that's an intern or somebody that's, um, you know, pretty green. But, I mean, another way to tell if it is somebody like that, that's an intern or right. somebody that's green, try and find somebody that's, that's at least done something on their own, you know. It doesn't necessarily have to be huge or successful, but if they can show you that they've built their own website from scratch and they've, you know, competed and won at, you know, it doesn't matter how granular the keyword is, I mean, that's a good indication that at least they have an idea, a general idea of what they're doing. That's a great point. Would you recommend that everybody here start with a specific keyword they want to target and build everything around that keyword? How many keywords should they work with to be, what was that? Hey, Chris, we can hear you up here. I know you guys are talking about robots. <laughs> Um, do you, should people pick a certain keyword? How many keywords? So you should do a keyword research, and there's a there's a number of tools for uh, for keyword research. The the best one that I would recommend is Google has one that's free. It's the Google AdWords keyword tool. If you just go to Google and type in keyword tool, it's going to be the one that comes up first. And then from there, I would um, I would punch in your first one to three competitive keywords, and from there, it's going to spit out a big list to you. Um, and so you can go from there and you can look down um, based on both um, the volume that the site gets as well as how competitive that, that space is. And so from there I would try and determine which, which keyword or keywords that I, that, that I would want to go after, you know. If something's like a 10 out of a 10 in terms of competitiveness and it gets a ton of volume, like let's just take like um, mortgage for example, like that's probably not something that I would want to just you know, start from scratch with zero budget and, and go after. But if it's, you know, low rate mortgage in Santa Monica and the competitive set is low and the volume's low, like maybe that's that's somewhere that you want to start out with. Start winning like, you know, more of the long tail keyword searches like that before you move mm -hmm. on to the, to the more competitive stuff. And as I mentioned, I am absolutely passionate about all of you guys succeeding. So if you want a quick video lesson in how to do keyword research, you can email me and I'll make one for you. Literally, it doesn't exist. I would create it on my computer for you and send it to you. Um, so you can email me later. So would you agree with that? If about about mortgages? <laughs> no, like you're you're saying that you you obviously like understand the keyword space, yeah. right? So yeah. I mean, would you agree with what I just said or? About, about looking at high uh, About as far as like determining like what keyword or keywords you would go after, kind of where to begin. I mean, now. I look at keywords that have like 30,000. I know, you're pushing me. I Stop it. You're pushing me right now. I look at keywords that have no, you told, at least 30,000 searches at exact search, and I look for how, how much competition it has, and I look for how many sites are competing against that, and the lesser sites, the better. I can't remember what exact number I look for and how many competing sites there are, but I definitely look for that bare minimum. I like exact search, but I know most people work on phrase, but that makes no sense to them right now at all. I also and you're like just exact search, me. so... <laughs> at least we have that in common. Just... <laughs> at least we have that in yeah. common. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, go. So, so you want to look at the two. So it's gonna it's gonna both show like the like how competitive it is, and it's gonna show the volume. So you ideally you want to find the one that has the highest volume with the smallest comp with the smallest competition. Like that that would be a, yeah. the ideal one, but. 
I mean, in this day and age, it's getting pretty hard to find keywords that are high volume that people aren't competing on. It's, it's still out there, but it's pretty hard. And so generally, I just try to go down the list, you know, starting from scratch and look at the ones that are realistically, that you can realistically compete for, you know? Like something like, I'll, I'll use a mortgage example again. Um, there's at least 10 major brands out there that are spending tens of millions of dollars every year on just SEO. Like it's, it's pretty damn near impossible for just somebody starting from scratch with zero budget to compete on that. But there, there are certain things you could do. Like you could use um, Google Plus, create a page, and that could help increase things. I mean, right? Sure. Yeah. Like and all that stuff's going to help you, but I mean, still, I mean, you generally want to tend to stay away from the, the keywords that are com that competitive yeah, I and agree. people are spending that much money yeah. because, I mean, you're just going to get mowed over. So, lesson is do not go after mortgage. <laughs> um, Okay, so if you were implementing um, like an absolute new campaign today, how long would you say it would take to see results? For SEO? Yeah. Uh, brand new site, I would say I would give myself at least six to 12 months at least before I ex expected anything. Um, and by anything, um, anything significant, like from day one, you're, you're gonna start getting a handful of searches, you know, you're gonna, a couple here, a couple there, you know, it's gonna slowly grow 10, 20, 50, 100 a day, um, but I, I mean, it, it takes some time, um, but you know, a lot of it depends on how aggressive you want to be with it, um, what, your, what your budget is, how, how much money you can throw behind it. Cool. You and know, how, yeah. sorry, I don't want to cut no, you no, off. No, no, it's okay. Um, like, how, how much traction you, your site gains naturally. Like, there's a lot of these, like, startups and stuff that we see out there that just, like, kind of just, they're viral successes, I guess, where they just kind of like take off and ha have like good stories behind them, like, like a life of their own, right? They're getting tons of press, things like that. I mean, that kind of stuff's gonna happen a lot quicker. Totally. Um, so uh, we've been kind of going on the route of SEO and how to apply that to your startup, but I wanna do a check-in with you guys because I could either take the conversation and ask, you know, what do we do with these keywords? And I have a ton of other questions here, or I could ask you guys, what do you want what do you want out of this conversation? Do you want to hear more about, you know, his experience working with CBS? So why don't we start with you? Um, yeah, I'm looking at you. Yeah, what's more, more, about the keywords. more about the keywords? Raise your hand if you want more about the keywords and that kind of conversation. Okay, and you had a question before. What was your question? Yeah, it was about how long would it take for the rankings to go higher? Six to twelve yeah. months. I mean, that's, that's a general rule of thumb, but I mean, there really is just so much that goes into determining that. It's, again, like how competitive is the landscape? How, how much manpower or resource, like personal work resources or budget are you throwing behind it? So there's a lot of different things that go into it, but it, SEO is, is something that does take time. You know, you can't do stuff today and expect results tomorrow, so. Go ahead. Um, Ten bucks. <laughs> so for me personally, if I was starting a site from scratch, I would set, I would, I would spend um, a very small amount of budget. That's just because like I know how to do a lot of like the on-site stuff and like setting up the architecture of the site and like things like that on my own. And that's something that it's it's pretty simple for most everybody to do nowadays with you know um, good CMSs like WordPress. Um, I mean, those are, for the most part, pretty, pretty SEO friendly right out of the box. And where they do fall short on SEO, it's, there's a plugin available for it. Um, SEO, what is it called? SEO by Yoast? Yeah, it's Yoast. Yeah. I have that one. Are you kind of talking about two different things? Are you talking about SEO, but you're also talking about SEM? So, I mean, SEO, like, you know, WordPress is going to take care of, like, yeah, 10% yeah. of your SEO needs, so you really don't have to spend anything. The other 15% would be how you name your images, what's in your title, right. you know, what's Right. All day. So, so they no, they actually are spending ten million dollars on just SEO guys to, to go in. It's, it's. I mean, generally at the point they're at now, they're not guys that are going in there and tweaking title tags. Although that stuff probably does happen quite frequently, um, but they're probably spending most of their money on link building and things like that. And so, where you, when you um, say that 
WordPress like out of the box 80%, like you're correct, like 80% of on-page SEO. But the other factor of SEO is the link building. And that's, it, it's hard to say exactly what percentage of overall like SEO th that is, but it's a very, very important part of SEO yeah, is the link you building. Sure. Probably, right? And you're saying, oh, it's you know six to twelve months for the SEO to really hit, but this you know street date is is in three right. weeks. So how is SEO? How is what you're doing, you know, helpful for that? Sure. So it's a, it's a it's dramatically different for us at CBS because one, we've already got a site that ranks for the the keyword loss, and two, we've already got sites that have um, massive authority in the eyes of Google, and so. For us, it doesn't take six to 12 months to, to rank stuff. Um, when I was talking about six to 12 months, that's more of like starting a, a brand new site from scratch okay. type, type of thing. But once you have a site that's established and it's already built up authority with Google, like you, know, you can launch new page, pages and that stuff can happen instantly. I mean, a lot of it's gonna depend on how competitive the keyword is for that page. But you know, for, for us at CBS, if, if we were coming out with lost DVDs tomorrow, and we didn't put up a page until yesterday, like we would still probably have a really good chance at ranking for it, just because, first of all, like in terms of being like the number one destination that Google could possibly send a user to for the keyword loss, like CBS is gonna be it. And so anything related to that, like we're instantly gonna have like a ton of credibility with them. So, so season one, episode one of Lost, how, can you provide a case study on link building for, a, for something brand new where you don't, where somebody just types in lost, now Google, sure, it's the, you know, you're in the Sure, end. sure. But the first week, well, we just, it's lost, right? We just <laughs> 12 months or what, you know. So, it's, you know, maybe you can give me a, a Like a case study for CBS or a case study for a site starting out brand new from scratch that wants to rank for like lost season one, episode one. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're just basically, I mean, you're, you're, you're telling me that it's not SEM, that you're not blowing out a bunch of, you know, money mm -hmm. on, on AdWords, you're doing, you know, you're right. really, you're, you're doing link building, so maybe I could, you know, explain. Which was my next question on link building, so it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's, yeah, so, so, what's so we're not, so we're not only doing link, link building, so if we have, like, if we have a new uh, show coming out for CBS, like, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build, we're going to build a page for that site, and we're going to give it the proper on-page SEO to, to go with that, you know, there's product teams, and there's editorial teams, and engineering teams that are going to make you know, do all the website design and put all the content on it and give it the, you know, give it the proper URL structure and things like that. But then we need to go in, in and put a little bit of our SEO magic on it where we're gonna, you know, properly name the title tags. We're gonna write a good de a meta description tag so that when people see our result in the, in the searches, they're gonna click through to our result. And then from there, like, f for us, we, a lot of it we can do through internal linking. So. We can start promoting that show on the home page of our site. We can start promoting that show from other show pages on the site. And that, that in itself is a form of link building, but that's called internal link building. Whereas like a, a site that's starting out brand new from scratch or a site that's not even starting out brand new from scratch, but a site that's not a CBS site that still wants to rank for one of our shows, they would have to put a lot more effort into the external linking. So they would have to go find other sites out there on the web that are related to, to the TV shows, like an IMDB, for example, or a TV guide do, or tvguide.com site, and they would have to try in some way convince them to, to link to that to that site. And that can be done through like building some like explosive viral piece of content that's just like you, you know, wows you so much that they want to share it with their readers and their blog or whatever. So they'll link to it that way or PR moves and really uh, yeah, a Right, a lot, of, a lot of link building, um, PR, you know, a lot of it is PR, a lot of it you can blur the lines with PR and ty type of thing. So yeah, that is, I mean, that's a really easy way to look at link so building as PR. To sort of add, that follow on to, to her question there, to sort of, to get, get started, it's really not so much about, if you, especially if you're building on, on top of it, you know, a CMS that's got a lot of that stuff taken care of. Does everybody know what CMS is? Co content management system like WordPress mm -hmm. or, or whatever. So uh, if you've got all that stuff taken care of, you're, what you're, you really don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on, a, on an SEO person. It seems like you want to really figure out kind of some guerrilla PR to get, to, to get a link building. Sure, sure. If the PR person understands SEO, like that, yeah, that, I mean, that's a good start. Like I, 
ideally I would have both. I would have the SEO person kind of backing up the PR person, but you, kind of, you really want to have both because the PR person is going to take a, a much different strategic approach than the SEO person is. Um, they've got different um, you know, goals and KPIs and things that they're going for than the SEO is. So they're, you know, they've blurred the lines, they cross the lines, they're, there's a lot of similarity, but they're still, you know, you know, it's still very advantageous to have a, somebody at least that understands SEO and understands like the dynamics of link building behind it to make sure at least what the, the PR person is doing is, is correctly and it's gonna have a good effect. Correct me if I'm wrong, what that means is you're doing keyword research and you use that main keyword in the subject line and in the description and all that kind of stuff and the, and the PR person right. wouldn't necessarily do that. So that's, so that's the on-page stuff, yeah. So having it in, in the, the browser title tag and the headline, um, you know, hopefully in the body of content if it makes sense. Like, I, I don't encourage just p throwing keywords into your content just because you think it's gonna help it rank better. Um, Whatever is gonna be best for the users. So thinking about readability. Um, so making sure if, sure if it's there. So that's kind of like the on-page part of it, but we're more talking about the, like the link building part of it where it's like going out and trying to get other third-party websites to, to link back to your website, um, you know, whether it's with like the anchor text right. of that exact keyword you that you're trying to rank. Can you explain what anchor text is? Yeah, so anchor text is just like the, the keyword that they're using to link to, to, link to you. Um, like the, the most generic one you see is like click here, or, you know, things like that. Um, but whatever is like covered in the link. Like right. that's anchor text, so. Does that make sense to everybody, what anchor text is? Does anybody feel like they're lost a little bit right now? You're gonna be too embarrassed, raise your hand. Well, you have a carrot, so I don't know how you're lost. <laughs> that is not, <laughs> right. yeah, whatever it is. It's amazing is what that is. <laughs> what question do you have? Uh, you're showing me the radish? Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, are there any tools like Hittail? I don't know if you're familiar with Hittail. Uh, sure. Or like any tools like that. Hit, it's Hittail.com that you would recommend to kind of get started with an SEO for startup. Yeah, campaign. for SEO specifically, um, probably the one that I would recommend the most would be SEMrush. SEMrush.com. And for social? Um, yeah putting the social buttons on your site. Like, I, I don't, there's not necessarily like a tool that I would recommend for that. Like, a, a lot of the stuff that we do for like social specific at CBS is like completely one-off custom stuff that we, we've designed in-house. Um, so we don't use a lot of tools for that part of it. How about analytics? For, what, analytics for search and then analytics for social? Um, I would use Google Analytics for both. I mean, that's what, a, what I use on all like my own personal websites and, and things like that, and that's what I'd recommend. It's free. So you don't think there's a huge, there's all these analytic tools coming out now and you don't see any huge advantage in uh, using one of the fancy tools? <laughs> no, so it really depends on what analytical data like you're trying to get out of it. Like there's a lot of tools that I would recommend, like Crazy Egg, for example, like is a yeah, great tool, but Egg. that's like a conversion optimization tool. So it's not necessarily SEO or social specific. Right. It's more about like designing your page so it, it converts the best, like testing right. how how users are interacting with your site I and love things crazy like that. Egg. There's Crazy Egg and there's also Mouse Flow, which captures like where a mouse is moving on the screen for each site visitor. Go ahead. So, so it's completely different from any of those. Um, so it's all like conversion optimization data. So what, what Crazy Egg is, is it's a tool that tells you where on the page you, your users are clicking. So what links are clicking, what images they're clicking, um, kind of like how they're interacting with your pages. So it's, it's a, a lot different than something like a Google Analytics or a Hootsuite or you know, any of the SEO specific tools um, like SEMrush, that's a good one. And there's some analytical, analytic data in there as well that's useful. Um, like number of backlinks and stuff, so you can look at the number of backlinks you have. You can get pretty granular with that as far as like unique linking sites, things like that, and then you can look at your competitive set. How much time should people spend on analytics per week? Ooh, like should they put a so huge emphasis on analytics or just kind of... So you should definitely monitor? put an em emphasis on it, but I don't know. I mean, it's not something that you necessarily s s 
uh, at least once you kind of like understand what it, what you're reading and looking at, it's not something I don't think you need to spend like a lot of time per se. It's something that I check pretty frequently. Um, you know, I kind of uh, weed through, and there's a few different like KPIs and stuff that I'll look at on like a day-to-day -day basis, or sometimes even maybe like an hour-to-hour -hour basis. But I mean, kind of, I guess once I get the hang of it, I don't generally spend like hours at a time like digging do through stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but that would be different. Like if I was like taking over somebody else's established site that's been around for a couple of years, and I was taking over from day one. That's a case where I would spend like a lot of hours up front, kind of like getting really deep digging, kind of like understanding, like you know all the data and stuff for that site. What are some? I mean, I know we've talked about it. Maybe it, it's difficult to go into it more right here, right now. But what are some more advanced tips that over and beyond link building and title tags that people can implement when they leave here today? So advanced tips, um, I, I would say there's not necessarily things beyond that. It's more just like different tactics or different strategies for, for those um, different things. Can you give us one? <laughs> um, like link building tactics, like just coming up with, with ways to get people to naturally link to your site. So, you know, that could be something like an infographic. So creating a, an infographic, does everybody know what an infographic is? Raise your hand if you know what it is. All right, most of you. So, why don't so you that, that could be something that's used as like an advanced link building tactic is like building infographics and then like spreading those around the web. And so people will embed those on their blogs or other sites and things that will have, you know, a link back to your site as well. An infographic is literally just a graphic with information dis displayed in a really visual yeah. way. Um, do you think everyone, well, I guess we kind of talked about this. I was going to say, do you think everyone in the room could, you know, essentially one day master SEO, or do you think it's a specialized skill that you'd have to, <laughs> like, kind of like you can't just do physics or chemistry without, if you suck at math. So do you have to have a certain personality type and talent to be able to do SEO? Um, so I, I think there is a definitely a personality type, but I think, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of cliche to say, but it's like, if, if I can do it, I think anybody can do it. Um, but it does take a certain personality type. Like you have, you definitely have to have patience. Um, SEO will test your patience like you wouldn't believe. Um, you have to have a, a high tolerance for risk. Well, six months or 12 months is a lot of patience. Right, right, definitely. <laughs> to wait around yeah. to see if everything's So working. I mean, in that aspect, it does take like a certain personality type to, to be successful at it. But really it's gotta be something that you're gonna be willing to, to put the time into. Um, that you're going to have to to make some kind of a dedication to really to to be good at it. S spend a lot of time, years. I, I mean, it takes years to be good at it. I mean, it sounds like overall the overarching kind of theme of our conversation, though, is that it's not that difficult to acquire the information, but it takes a, immense time and a pe and attention to detail to to really make it effective. Like you could keep acquiring yeah. the tactics, but you need to apply those tactics you know, hundreds of times to make them work. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? I would say that's pretty accurate. And then, you know, just like taking in all the data and stuff and figuring out what's right, what's wrong, what works doesn't, what works here, but doesn't work over what there. What keywords are better right. than other keywords? Yeah, which which keywords are turning into purchases? Yep. Um, and it, getting back to keywords for a second, how would you target a certain demographic with a keyword? Is there a way to do that? Like a certain demographic as far as? Like let's say you wanted 40-year-old um, women that are interested in purses. So your keyword is purses, but you only wanted, you know, 40 to 50-year-old range. Right. So with, with SEO, you can't, um, I mean, aside from the keyword level, you can't really target to, to demographics like that. Um, specifically targeting to def demographics like that is more of like a, a paid user acquisition model. So, you know, something like Facebook ads or AdWords, um, things like that. That's something where you can go in and you can specify what demographic you want to advertise to. But generally, if you start ranking for the, the keyword purses on Google, like it's not only going to show that keyword to 40 year old women that are looking for it, it's going to show it to anybody that looks for purses. Right. Yeah. And someone asked, Chris asked, what like we were talking about infographics and that's a way to like, <laughs> you're making me laugh, that's a way to drive traffic. Um, what's the best use of, you know, digital and video to drive traffic? 
He said, he said using high quality, low cost digital production via the web. Um, so, so having some kind of a distribution model behind that, um, really getting it out there, and that can be anything as far as like a PR campaign to um, making the, the video super viral. Like, did you see like the Dollar Shave Club No, stuff? I didn't see that. Just kidding. Are you joking? Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, so that's something where they, but that have, was like their yeah. distribution model, right? Was to create a really funny viral commercial that was just going to take upon a, a, or take a life of, of its, to, its own. To be fair, they had a PR campaign in, in tandem with the launch of the Right, to, to seed it, right? Yeah. To, do, to do that kind of stuff. So yeah, you've got to have some kind of a distribution model behind anything. Like you can build the best product in the world. You can have the cure for cancer. You can give away gold bricks for a dollar. And if nobody knows about it, you're not going to give any away. So. Right, so what I want to make sure when everybody leaves the room tonight, they know the first steps to take so that people could start knowing that they exist. So we were talking about, you know, one way is link building, one way is creating valuable content, whether it's a graphic infographic mm -hmm. or a video, um, and or it's, you know, making sure that your title tags and all that kind of stuff is accurate so when someone's searching for something on Google, they could clearly see your description and how it relates to them. Um, is, is that it? Is that what they're walking away with? That they should go home and Google, you know, how do I do meta tags? How do I do title tags? And, and how do I build links? And, you know, and I think guest blog posting is great for link building as well, don't you? Yeah, that's, a, that's another great strategy. Um, so guest blog posting, that's where you will reach out to third party websites and you would offer to produce a piece of content for them in exchange for being able to include a link back to your own site within that article. So yeah, that, that's definitely a, a good strategy. Um, you know, that, the question that you're asking is, is very loaded because you're like started out saying like, you know, if these people can walk away with anything that's gonna like help get their website out there. Um, so that's a little bit different than just talking about just like the SEO strategies that we've mostly been covering for. Okay. Um, to answer that question, I yeah. would like take a step back and I would be like, first to have like a really good product, right? Because the product and the marketing go together. It's it's going to be a hundred times easier to market a good product than it is to you know slapping the lipstick on a pig and trying to market that. And at the same time, if you have a good product and you're not doing the marketing behind it, it's you know the the gold brick analogy that right. I just used. You're gonna have you're gonna run into the same thing. So those two things have got to kind of work in tandem. You've got to have a really good product that people are going to want to use without. I guess you kind of pushing it onto them. It's you know something that they're gonna want, totally. want to use without that. My, so. my most my the word I can't stand is when people ask me how are you gonna convince people. I'm like, listen, I don't want to create anything that I need to convince anybody of anything. I want them to like get so excited when I talk about it that they begged beg me to have it. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, so you're saying the first step is make sure you have an awesome product. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean that's that's gonna make every any aspect of your marketing that's going to make it like i said 100 times easier that's going to make the seo easier it's going to be a lot easier to attract the backlinks to your site um you know especially f even from the pr angle like if you have a good story and a good product to go with it like it's going to be a lot easier to get traction in those areas um you know it's to the point where it's the google's so good at right now at like determining what's a real natural link versus what's um like a gamified link um and by that i mean paying for a link right. or like strategies that would fall outside of their guidelines, um, things like that. And so they're really good at determining the two. And so like having a good product is, is going to make that a lot easier to obtain those natural links. People are going to love your product. They're going to start tweeting about it. Um, that could be con considered as counting as a link. They're going to start sharing it on their Facebook walls. They're going to link to it from within their blogs. Um, it's going to, you know, start getting press. You know, maybe you're going to get on TechCrunch, you know, all the different, um, you know, tech blogs and things like that are going to start covering it. So it really does start with having a, a good product and a good story behind that. Totally. And I, th I think a lot of it is also creating a culture behind your company so that people can feel connected to what, what it is that you're selling. Um, Andy asked, what social networks, channels does CBS use to provide exclusive content behind the, th the scenes, et cetera, for fans and how? Um, so mostly, mostly Facebook and Twitter. Um, that's just because that's where the biggest audiences are going to be for us. Um, you know, mobile is another one where we invest heavily for the social stuff. Um, 
as far as the how, like we we build a lot of um, super custom stuff. So let's talk about like CBS specific stuff. So CBS.com, like we've spent a lot of time developing um, social apps that are going to be part of like a second screen experience. So nowadays, when people are watching TV, they're going to have their smartphone or they're going to have their iPad or whatever, and they're going to be you know whether it's looking for information that they're seeing on these TV shows or just being a part of like a a community that's conversing around like what's happening with the TV show. So we've built experiences for that. So like while you're watching a TV show right now, like you can log into our app and you can you can interact with other fans and c talk about the the storyline, the plot, like things like that that are going on. So it's quite we, exciting. Actually. Yeah. So we invest yeah. heavily into like building our own proprietary stuff for that that type of thing. Yeah, that's I love that interactive experience yeah. while you're watching something. So I have the the personal questions, if you could call them that. What would you say is your greatest strength? <laughs> De definitely not patience. <laughs> um, I'm good at pretending I have patience. Um, so my biggest strength, I, I think, would just be um, just being like a big thinker, um, like a visionary, strategic kind of guy, I, I would say. Like, I I'm really good with that kind of stuff. And what would you say is your biggest weakness? <laughs> uh, <laughs> my biggest weakness, I would say, is that I'm shy. <laughs> So, I can't tell. It, it, no, and that's, that's actually something that I've really um, kind of taken it upon myself the last year or so to really improve upon. Because um, a lot of what my job entails is like pitching things to like executives or executives or our company and things like that. And I'm a really shy person by nature. And so I get nervous when I do that kind of stuff. And so um, that's really something that I'm trying to overcome so I can like present my information to them better and I guess be more of mind when, I, when I'm doing it instead of just being like super nervous and things like that. But well, I appreciate <laughs> you uh, not yeah. putting your shyness aside to be here right uh, now. Um, what would you say is one poor business decision you made in the past that you wish you could change? Oh, uh, so uh, <laughs> I've made a lot of Definitely a lot of poor business decisions in the past. You mean past. you're not perfect? <laughs> far, very far <laughs> from, come on. Um, so it, it would be hard for me to say that I would change any of them. Just, you, you know, again, just to be super cliche, like any of those decisions that I've made, good or bad, have kind of brought me to where I am today. And I'm in a super good place. I'm very happy with where I am. Like, I wouldn't change it for the world. And so it's hard for me to, like, have regrets about any of those bad decisions. Um, I've made a a lot of poor decisions. I wouldn't even <laughs> like know where, to, know where to start with that. I've made so many mistakes and um, d done so many things wrong. But it, again, I've learned from all of them and they've all brought me to, to where I am today. So I'm happy. And you know, but I think that's really important for everybody to hear because they see someone like you and they think you have, you know, from a perception value, it's like, oh, he. Oh, I don't know if they think that. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's hard. It's really difficult to like see someone who looks like they have it all together and think that they made mistakes and they're okay and that and we're the same, one and the same. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I so I think that's really important to know. What's your favorite mobile app? Favorite mobile app, Uber for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I took an Uber over here from the hotel, but lo love Uber. Big fan <laughs> of it. And what's your favorite web app? Uh, favorite web app? Shoot, I don't know. Would Twitter be considered a web app? We could go. We could go with Twitter. Uh, and what would you? What are some things that you would consider a, a web app? Uh, shoe. Well, I love Shoebox. Um, I even consider Fancy a web app. Oh, Dropbox is uh, a web app. Yeah. Dropbox, Twitter. I'm I'm locked out of Twitter right now though, so we'll see how. You're it goes. locked out of yeah. Twitter. Yeah. So my. Uh, my Twitter account, it was tied to an email that I no longer have ownership of. And I think I got caught up in the, the last couple of months they've had some security breaches and they've been um, resetting, automatically resetting people's passwords and then emailing them the new password. Yeah. And I think I got caught up in this because the other day um, when I cleared like the cookies and the cache on my computer, I tried to log back into Twitter and oh, I, no way. none of my passwords worked. So, I may be able to help yeah. you with that. So we'll see. I put in a couple of emails and so far it's gotten nowhere. but. <laughs> I don't know. I'm almost looking at it like maybe it's good, it could be a good thing, you know? It can be such a time suck at, at times <laughs> that maybe it's a good thing that I'm not on there anymore. I don't know. How about your favorite business book? Favorite business book? Um, 
one that came out pretty recently, um, I'm going to be a little biased in saying this because my friend wrote it, but it's called The Power of Starting Something Dumb. Oh, I've never even heard yeah, that. It's, uh, the author's name is Richie Norton. I actually just thought, it, you know, despite him being my friend, I thought it was a really good book. I would encourage it to anybody. Um, a lot of it talks about just, I guess, not being afraid to um, kind of like start your dream and make it a reality despite maybe what other people will think or just having like your own internal self-doubts and things like that. And so I thought that and was we a really all have good one. Them. Of course. Yeah. Um, I want to take it back to you guys. How are we doing on time, Efren? Cool. Uh, questions. I want to make sure you leave here and you really feel like, okay, that was awesome and I know exactly what to implement. What's one question that, yeah, I'm looking at you. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, well, first of all, I thought it was a really good question. Thank you. Yeah, sure. The big thing in social, um, I think for the next little while it's going to be the things that are already big. I think it's the the few that I would name off the top of my head are the the obvious ones: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Um, from there, it's it's going to be interesting to kind of see what what there's some new stuff on the scene that are kind of like I guess in, intruding on their any one of their spaces, um, like the Snapchat, um, you know, things like that. So it's going to be interesting to see where they go. But for f we're, we're starting to use Vine um, very minimally, I, w I would say. Like, um, it's still a little bit, one, figuring out how, um, I guess, we can use those from, like, a, a, bra a branded perspective. And two is the, it's still a relatively new thing. The audience isn't there for us yet. And so with us, where we're already such big properties, like we tend to kind of focus where the, we're going to get the biggest bang for our buck or where we can reach the, the biggest audiences. And so those are going to be like all the typical ones that I, d I just named. What, a, what question do you have? What, what did you want when you came here tonight? What did you want to learn and walk away with? Perfect. And what would you say was your biggest takeaway so far? <laughs> oh, yikes. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I'm waiting for the real answer. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah, we do we do a lot of that kind of stuff. So just outside of like the CBS.com site, so we have, for example, CBS Sports, and we put on a lot of big events. This year we had the Super Bowl. Um, we do all the March Madness stuff. We do the Masters. Um, we have a ton of big events on there. Um, CNET.com, we do like all the big like tech product launches. So iPhone 5, Galaxy, Samsung S4, um, like things like that and so we do like a ton of that kind of stuff just outside of like our CBS show so if you guys have any um, more questions that are more geared towards that type of stuff I'd be happy to try and answer them. Go ahead Joy. So to, to populate like Pinterest specifically? Yeah, it's one example. So probably the, probably the place where we use that most is on our website, chow.com. Just because that's pin, the Pinterest audience is going to be most aligned with chow.com. Chow.com is, is a recipe site oh. that we own. Um, and so a lot of what we do there is just having like the, it, it's, we have a little bit of an unfair advantage because we have so much um, traffic that's coming to our sites from other places that it's easy for us to just like throw up a pin it button on our images and people are going to instantly, like mass amounts of people are instantly going to start pinning those, right? And so it's a little bit different for somebody like you that's starting with, like just assuming, I don't, I don't know what you're starting with, but let's just say you're starting with a zero audience, like that's going to be much different for you in like how you're going to see it and how you're going to get traction. Like for us, like the stuff that's either like 
the really good recipes or the really good food images or like the really good like how to or viral posts that we do like those those kind of things generally just take uh, they take upon like a life of their own and so for us it's we take a step back from that and kind of like look at the content strategy of what kind of stuff that we can develop that we feel that is going to instantly resonate with those type of audiences and they're you know going to those people are going to start sharing for us instead of us like having to go out and hire somebody that can get us the traction or a power user that can see our posts or things like that and so we just we really look at it from like something like that from like a content marketing strategy like standpoint so can you give us um, some content ideas like we were talking about video and we were talking about the infographics and we were talking about how to articles mm -hmm. um, what are some different you know food for thought so people could have them jostling around with different types of content people can create um, like you get like all the, like the, the top lists, um, the how to's, the resourceful content, um, you know, like a lot of that stuff, that's just what I would throw out off the top of my head. Um, it's hard to say anything specific just because like everybody's going to have their own different site. Um, you know, we talked about infographics. Those are great pieces of viral content. Things that are going to resonate with your users that they're going to um, be compelled to share on their own, whether it's because they think it's funny, whether they think it's r resourceful that they want to share with their fr their friends that they think might like benefit from that type of thing. And so there's a couple of different angles that you can look at there, whether you know the funny viral stuff, the resourceful stuff, the controversial stuff, um, you know things like that typically. I think I think what's important to understand, and I know it's a word that's been thrown around like crazy is, especially now with Google changing the way they handle things on the back end, is the more authentic and real you make it so that your content and what you do is valuable to the people receiving it, the more you'll be successful. Um, Google, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, is tired of people trying to game the system as you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. So just bring it, bring your authenticity and what's really you. And I know that word authenticity is thrown around at every single social media conference. It's annoying. But I don't know how else to. It's annoying, but it's true, right? Like you said, like it's very hard to uh, uh, today. It's very, very hard to fake Google out. Um, the last couple of years, like the number of like updates that they've done on their algorithm and the sophistication of them, is far surpasses anything that that happened the ten years prior to that. Um, so it's, I mean, you really you can't you can't fake them out anymore. It's. To lack of a better word, you got to be authentic, right? Yeah, I think. Um, so Bing is a very small percentage of traffic in comparison to Google. Um, you know, you see all the comms core stuff that says Google's like I don't even know what the number is. I'm just going to throw things out like 60% and Bing's 30% and Yahoo's 10% uh, or whatever. But like. The real numbers are much more like Google's 90%, 95%. Yeah. I think ending on the idea of being authentic is perfect. And I want to thank Tech Zulu for being in my life and putting this on. And I want to thank Rock for letting us sit here right now. And thank Cameron for just being you. You're awesome. Thank you. Thanks for yeah. having me. And you guys, I really am committed to all you guys succeeding. So if you didn't feel you got something answered, get my card, email me, harass me. Um, you're awesome. <laughs>